Watching a lot of your podcasts, man. You've been calling Uncle Snoop a damn snitch. Yeah. We got Takashi on the stand running his mouth. We're going to get into that. But well, why do you call Snoop a snitch? Yeah, yeah. I might be coming a little hard on Snoop. But um, uh, I'm speaking the real. I, I put up the paperwork for any of y'all that don't believe it. You can look on Bomb First. It's pinned it um, in the video section with the police report where – Snitch is not the correct word because snitching is when you usually tell the truth. Um, I think I don't know what the word is when somebody's lying on you or trying to get you and in, in caught up or incarcerated. Yeah. I don't know what that word is, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure there's a word out there. But what what Snoop did is we went to holler at Snoop and some things happened at the uh, when we went to holler at him and all of that. And he took off and ran. He on dash. And Priest Superfly, you know, another little young producer that was trying to be up under him that never really made it. They all took off and ran straight to the police. And and they got arrested because they had some weed on them. And then one of the homies that was with us, Sox knew, hit him in the face and all of that. And they took and ran like little bitches like they are and ran straight to the uh, police. And then... The police, you know, pat them down and get the weed and all of that. So while they talking to them, and you know, they probably developing a relationship and they telling them, oh yeah, these guys with guns and they were trying to shoot us and 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 um, uh, you know, I fear for my my cousin, my nephew. He's still tied up with them and and, and they gonna kill him just like uh like uh you know like should kill Tupac. Damn. Now those ain't the exact words. It's I peril paraphrased it, but y'all can read the report for yourself, go to Bone first, and check it out. And my point to all of that is two years prior to that, Suge had just bet on Snoop. Because he hadn't really put out nothing but one song, Decover, when when he caught that murder case. And Suge, y'all, anybody that knows about the murder case, those are expensive. Still get this laid out four and a half to five million dollars defense. It was a it was a gamble. Everybody said, "Oh yeah, he made he sold five million records and he did this." And it's still a gamble because he hadn't done it yet. But he did it. And he hit a home run. He hit home runs. He hit two, and uh, got the money back. But it's still a gamble. But somebody that put that type of money up for you and, and lay lay out, you know, put their their sales on the line for some some other things and and look out for you. And then two years later, you try to get them the same beat that they just helped you beat for a slap or just because you're mad because uh, some niggas came and y'all had a confrontation and you're going to try to put that on them? I don't know what you call that person. I don't know. It ain't cool, in my opinion. Yeah, that's um, that's, that's pretty crazy there. Um, I got to check out that paperwork. That's oh, your first so, time hearing that all? Yeah, I hadn't heard that. I, heard I mean, that. and people say, oh, you, you just created that because you were an ex-cop and all of that. No, Nick Broomfield put it in his little documentary in 1998. His, his article in the LA Times wrote about it and all of that. So, yeah. So, I, 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 we got to transition, obviously, in the 6 9 after hearing that now. Is this a culture that goes on in music, first and foremost, before we get your thoughts on 6 9 Is is testifying and talking something that readily happens and it's just it's just not just starting with six nine and getting such high publicity has this been going on to your knowledge for a long time man being on law enforcement everybody talk eventually people i don't know niggas that tell on their mama to be honest so i i don't just put it as a uh a um a, a rap industry uh culture it's um uh, Niggas talk a lot and say a lot of what they want to do or won't do and all of that. Until you get those uh, social security digit numbers thrown at you and all of that. If it generally don't affect somebody you really, really love or yourself, I think it's in everybody, man. Not everybody, but 90% of, it, of people. Yeah, that's um, you know, pretty crazy. No, speak, speaking of, you know, that Six nine. How, how do you feel? I'm, right. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just it's just a fact. I mean, look at our poll. That's somebody on y'all that's real big. I mean, that's happened. <laughs> so, 
but anyway. Yeah, Takashi Six Nine is running his mouth uh, right now, telling on everybody. Jim Jones, Cardi B. We can go down the laundry list of people that he's implicated over the last few days. Um, do you feel like he is justified in doing what he did? Because you know the videos came out. He got kidnapped by that particular, you know, that blood set. It looks like they was messing with his girl, supposedly extorting him. How do you feel about him telling? You think he's justified or not? Yeah, if something like that and you feel you have to do it if you're attacking one person, okay. If you're attacking me because I slept with your girl and you're that much in love with her and I kidnapped you and had you kidnapped and held for ransom. But like you just said, Cardi B ain't did nothing to the man. Jim Jones ain't did nothing to the man. And I think it's about 15 or 20 other dudes that's on that indictment that haven't done anything to him. But have his back. Or, or, or try to, you know, gave him the the confidence to speak like he was speaking and saying, check my gangster. Isn't that what he said? Mm -hmm. My gangster or whatever. He wasn't talking that to the government. He was talking that to uh, to street dudes, right? When he went, went walking around in Chicago and all of that, he, he did all of that because those dudes had his back. And, and now you're going to try to bring them down? Um, because some numbers getting thrown at you, that's a problem. Like I said, you know, snitching is snitching, but I might give you a little pass if it was just shoddy that did all of these things to him. And and, and he felt that was his way of getting back with him because shoddy should have known better anyway when you're dealing with somebody that didn't grow up in the sandbox with you. And, uh, you know, you just found in a grocery store or in a deli and you put him on three or four years ago, and now you're doing all of this dirty stuff with him, and you think he's going to hold tough. You're supposed to be smarter than that if you're, if you're on the streets, too, in my opinion. Speak on Shadi. You were on the record to say you think he's about to snitch, too, right? Why do you think that? Well, I think for the crimes that he was accused of and the number that he was uh, facing, not only in state court, but in federal court, and for that state case to get dropped or pled time served, and then let's go over to the federal court, um, 15 years, it's a hell of a deal, man. It's a hell of a deal. And um, somebody else talking in that circle. And somebody else been talking. Uh, Y'all boy, 6 9 was talking before he got arrested. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had contacted him. You go listen to that Breakfast Club interview, the second one. Mm -hmm. And it's written all over your face. Well, that's all. It's written all over your face. It was written all over his face that uh, that he had a change of heart about those brothers <laughs> and, and all the stuff he was talking the, the Breakfast Club interview prior to that. Is it possible he was ever an informant? We threw that conspiracy out there or, or that thought out there. Is it ever in your estimation that he was ever in this to do this shit all along? Now, nah, because then he wouldn't be sitting in there where he said now. They wouldn't have put him on blast like that. Okay. They would have just had a whole bunch of tape recordings. So There's a whole bunch of times he could have had some nice stuff, tape videos and all of that on him. And nobody would have ever expected a thing. So now nah, I don't believe that. But I believe he was, he knew what was coming. He knew it was coming. Uh, he wasn't surprised. And anybody that ever been in trouble with the government, that's usually not for drugs or something like that, for other things. You know the FBI agents do homework for a long time, and they talk to a lot of people before they come. Do you see Jim Jones? You know now they put the audio out. I'm not sure if you heard it. And him no. pretty much. Yes, I have it. Okay, well he put it was pretty much audio with him going back and forth from one of the members, um, one of the blood members. He's a blood, you know. Um, saying that Takashi Six Nine needs to be violated. You think that they, you know, um, will come down, you know, on him now and all the other people that he snitched on? You think there'll be active investigations against Cardi B and these other uh, individuals? Was it after he was incarcerated or prior? After. Uh, after. after he was incar incarcerated? Yeah. It could be taken as a threat, I guess. Um, yeah, they just need to be careful. But, um, Generally, when they, they play their hand like that, talking about the government, they usually swipe up everybody uh, at the same time. 
Now that this is something new, where they just they just learned about it, then then yeah, he may need to watch out. But if they already known about it and that's been out there a while, then he's all right. But they usually are coming up. They swipe over everybody, put yeah. everybody together. Yeah, well, that's good for Jim Jones. You you guys talked on the podcast today, and, and um. Alex Alonzo and Mob James, or I don't know more so Mob James, but definitely Alex Alonzo compared Tupac and 6 9 situation. You disagree, but come just talk about that a little bit, what you guys are talking about on the podcast in regards to the comparison, and then your opinion on that. Man, those dudes that I got the podcast with, they just be talking. <laughs> Man, they, they don't be studying before they come in and they just be talking. They was my niggas, but they um Yeah, those those two Alex for sure seems to have a problem with Death Row and, and Tupac and and Shug as a whole. James he gets a bag of not liking Pac and and, and, and having a um no respect for Tupac, but it mainly become, I don't care, he don't care who it was. It wasn't because it's Pac. It's just because of what we learning from with 6 9 How these guys pull you in so close and, and be calling you the homie and the little blood and the little gangbanger and all of that. And your heart and your, 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 these are people that you supposed to have got winged out, would have got winged out a while ago. But now they up here standing like soldiers and they have no reason to be standing like soldiers or even associates. And I think that's all that James be trying to express. And they just come off as hating or hatred. And he means nothing by it that way. He just saying, hey, that nigga ain't never got in a car with me. That nigga ain't never stood toe to toe with me. For the mob, he may have been cool with you five or you six niggas that was rolling with him all the time, but y'all need to stop hollering that he was a mob member. And okay, I'll give him that. But Pop was loyal to who he was with. I don't care if it was whoever it was, he was loyal to that that particular person, in my opinion. And that's all I was trying to correct him and say, hey, Pop was loyal to what he felt was right. And that's why you had that incident with the shooting of two white men that learned, later learned to be cops. He didn't care that they were cops. He didn't know that they were cops or suspected that they were cops. He just thought they were two men or two white men that was taking advantage of a, uh, a black man. And he couldn't stand by and let it go down. I don't think it would be ever in Tupac's DNA to sit on the stand and point people out. Not just correct me if I'm wrong. I don't, I don't yeah. see that in it. Yeah, 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 and uh, you know that's what the unfairness of of what they really were saying, but I don't think that's what they meant. I really don't. But, yeah, yeah, it seemed like they were trying to compare the fact that he didn't really come up in that element too much. Yeah, threw Chris Brown in there as well, with right? Like that, we understand. That. Yeah. Right, right, definitely. But yeah, man, um, that's all I got on this side of the table. We hit about um hour and ten minutes. If you got a few more minutes, a few more questions, yeah, it's up to you. Man. I got a couple more questions. One, right. let's talk about Low Gucci real quick. Now, you said some things on the podcast. I dropped it on Viral Hip Hop News. It got crazy attention. Elaborate on that, because you told him to keep his country ass out of West Coast Affairs. Talk about what you meant by that, and also talk about um, just the, the reaction you got from it, and, and what you feel about Bootsy. 